Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Hello, good morning everybody. I, Dr. Vinutha Arbat, Associate Professor from the Department of Biochemistry, KMC Manipal. Today, we will start in a topic as what is called as mechanism of enzyme action. As we have already seen in the previous classes, we had a huge discussion on what is enzyme, what is the different action it has and then moving on, today we will see exactly what is the basis for the mechanism of enzyme action. Coming into the topic in detail, we will just see a few lines of what basically is an enzyme and how do they act. So, enzymes are basically defined as thermolabile, colloidal, biological catalysts, which are generally proteinaceous in nature and they are also synthesized by the living cells. They are high molecular weight, globular proteins, they are organic compounds and they usually convert substrate into what is called as a product. Generally, the action is to increase the rate of a reaction. Now, basically what is the action of an enzyme? We have already seen the first step in an enzyme catalyzed reaction is the formation of an enzyme substrate complex which is usually designated as ES, meaning to say enzyme reacts with a substrate forming an enzyme substrate complex. Now, this substrate is being bound through multiple non-covalent interactions at the active site. You must have already heard of what is an active site. I will come back to that in a short while. So, these non-covalent interactions are at the active site of the enzyme forming an enzyme substrate complex which is subsequently being converted to a product and then it will give you a free enzyme. So, you have an enzyme reacting with the substrate forming an enzyme substrate complex and then this dissociates to give you a product and a free enzyme. Okay, just to generalize the mechanism of an enzyme action, see I have an enzyme here and then I have an active site. Here is my enzyme, then I have an active site. Now, what basically is this active site? This active site is nothing but a small area or what you call it as a cleft or a small pocket occupying a very small region or a portion of the enzyme surface, this is present on the surface of the enzyme, wherein the substrate will come and bind to this active site and it will participate in the catalysis. So, active site is defined as a cleft or a pocket which is occupying a small region on the enzyme. You here you can see it is a very small area of the enzyme and this area is being denoted as the active site at which the substrate will come and bind to this and it will participate in the catalysis. Now, say for example, I have a substrate and this substrate is nothing but sucrose which is made up of two components. You have glucose and fructose which is binding together and this is the glycosidic linkage. So, glucose and fructose together form sub the molecule what is called as sucrose. Now, this being the substrate will come and bind to the enzyme. Okay. Now, where exactly it comes and binds? It will come and bind the active site. So, this is a small area and this is called as the active site. Now, this substrate being sucrose will come and bind to the enzyme here at its active site forming a complex what is called as the enzyme substrate complex. Okay. See, you can see here the blue one is the enzyme. You had a small cleft here which was designated as the active site 
and this substrate being sucrose exactly comes and fits into the active site forming a ES complex. Okay, this is just the explanation for the previous slide. Now, upon binding of the substrate to the enzyme, you have a ES complex that is being formed. Now, the binding of the substrate to the enzyme forms a sort of a stress. Okay, it places a stress because the enzyme has to accommodate the substrate at its active site. Now, the binding of the substrate on the enzyme places a sort of a stress on the glucose and fructose bond. Now, this glucose and fructose that was forming what was called a sucrose, there is a stress that is being placed and the bond gets released. See here, you can see the bond that is being formed. Here, when the stress is being placed, the bond is being dissociated. So, what happens when the bond gets dissociated? You have glucose and fructose as the products that are being released and then the enzyme is free. Now, when the enzyme is free, automatically the enzyme is free for some other substrate to come and bind to the active site. So, this was the basic mechanism for any of the enzyme to act. Just to have a recap, we have an enzyme, we have certain small regions on the enzyme what is designated as the active site. These active sites are open for the substrate to come and bind. Basically, I had the substrate as sucrose and this substrate comes and gets fitted into the active site of the enzyme and it forms an enzyme substrate complex. So, the binding of the substrate and the enzyme places a stress on the glucose and fructose bond and the bond is being broken. When the bond is being broken, I have the products that is glucose and fructose being released and the enzyme is free for some other substrate to come and bind into it. So, this is the basic mechanism for any enzyme catalyzed reaction. Okay. Now, I said active site, I have shown you the active site, I have defined what is an active site. So, active site of an enzyme is that region that binds the substrate and that also contains specific amino acid residues and I have two residues basically, one is called as the binding residue and the second being the catalytic residues and they possess three dimensional structures. Now, these binding sites or residues, they recognize and the bind the correct substrate to form the enzyme substrate complex. It will identify its own substrate and that substrate being the correct substrate will come and bind and it forms an enzyme substrate complex. And then I have the second residue what is called as the catalytic residue. This catalytic residue, it creates a chemical environment that enhances the reaction rate and the enzyme substrate complex is being converted to an enzyme and a product. That was the last picture what we saw. So, I, it has two residues, one is the binding residue, another being the catalytic residue. So, here is just a pictorial representation of showing you the active site. Then uh, here the blue represents my enzyme, the small cervix here is the active site and then I have the binding sites here which normally holds my substrate in place that is the substrate exactly comes and fits into this small area. And here is the catalytic site where exactly the reaction takes place where I had the bonding which was a glycosidic linkage and on breaking on that bond I had my products that is being released. Okay? So, these are the small cervixes is the binding site which holds my substrate. See the picture of the substrate is such that it exactly will go and fit into this small area which is nothing but the active site and this area is the catalytic site where the reaction occurs. So, this is just a representation of the active site. Okay. Now, whenever I have a change, either the change could be in the primary, secondary, tertiary 
or the quaternary structure that could alter the three dimensional shape of the active site which reduces both its binding as well as catalytic activity. Two models for substrate binding to the active site of an enzyme have been proposed to explain the specificity that an enzyme has for its substrate. You must have studied previously what is specificity, you had different classes of specificity like you had absolute specificity, you had group or broad specificity, you had stereo specificity, you had reaction specificity. Okay? So, basically what you do is the models that have been proposed to explain the specificity that an enzyme has for its specific substrate. Now, coming to the exact mechanism, there had been proposed active site models to explain the mechanism of enzyme action. The first model being called as the lock and key model, otherwise called as Fisher's template theory. It could also be called as rigid template model. Why the name is given rigid, I will come to that shortly. The second model being the induced fit model, which is otherwise called as the Koshland's theory. And then the third one being the substrate strain theory. The lock and key and the induced fit is almost there everywhere being explained. Combination of that two slowly results in one more theory, what is the substrate strain theory. Coming to the first lock and key model, which is otherwise called as the Fisher's template theory, the structure and the conformation of the enzyme is rigid. That is why it has been called as the rigid template model. Though the enzyme structure as well as conformation is very rigid, it does not change at all. Now, see, I have the active site of the enzyme here. This is my enzyme, and the small cervix or the region what I have is the active site. Here, the active site of the enzyme is very, very rigid, and I have a pre shaped template where only a specific substrate can come and bind. What do I mean by saying a pre-shaped template? See, if you see the structure of the substrate, the substrate is having a shape, say it is almost spherical in shape. Now, this shape can exactly come and bind to this region. It is almost rectangular here. This space can exactly come and bind into this area. And it is sort of triangular here, which exactly comes and fit into this area. So, the active site is so rigid that it can take in a substrate where exactly it can come and bind into this. Suppose instead of having a rectangular shape, it was again a spherical shape, naturally this substrate will not come and bind into this enzyme. So, the active site of the enzyme is so rigid, it will pick on to a substrate where exactly it can go and fit into this. Now, the substrate having an exact figure will directly come and bind into the active site and there forms what is called as an enzyme substrate complex. Okay? So, the active site of the enzyme is rigid and it has a pre-shaped template. This is a template where exactly a specific type of substrate can come and bind. And there exactly I, what I meant to say that this theory explains enzyme specificity. So, now you can see when it has a ES complex, how exactly the substrate has come and bound to the active site of the enzyme. So, in the lock and key model what we spoke now, the active site has a rigid shape, only a particular substrate which is matching, which has a matching shape can come and bind or it can come and fit into the active site of the enzyme. Now, here the substrate is a key that fit exactly into a particular lock of the active site. That is why the name is given as the lock and key model. Now, this explains enzyme specificity 
Of course, it is a older model however, does not work for all enzymes it has some of its own limitations. Now, why I say a substrate is a key that fits into a locus. The substrate fits into the binding site just as a key fits into a lock. Now, this is an exact representation for a lock and a key model. See if you see I have a key here. Now, this key will exactly go and fit into this lock. I try to bring in some other key and try to open this lock definitely it will not open right. So, exactly the mechanism holds good for the lock and key model. I had a substrate which has an exact template which can go and bind into the enzyme. So, the active site is very very rigid where exactly that substrate can go and bind into the active site. Similarly, here I have a key this key can open only this lock I cannot try to bring and fix in some other key and make this lock open. So, this model has been useful in understanding how some enzymes can bind only to a specific substrate, but it will not bind to any other compound with an almost identical structure that is why it is very very specific. So, it will bind to only a particular specific substrate and it cannot bind to any other compound with an almost identical structure. So, this model explains all mechanisms, but do not explain the changes that is occurring in an enzyme activity in the presence of allosteric modulators. Now, Fisher's model explained the specificity of an enzyme substrate interaction, but the implied rigidity of the enzymes active site failed to explain the dynamic changes that must take place during catalysis. Of course, it had its it was very rigid, but the implied rigidity of the enzyme active site it failed to explain the exact dynamic changes that is taking place during a enzyme catalyzed reaction. A model that accounts for both of these aspects that is enzyme specificity as well as explaining the dynamic changes that is occurring. So, there was a model that was accounting for both of these aspects of the enzyme catalysis is the second theory that came into picture and that is what is called as the induced fit model. Now, this induced fit model is named after the scientist it was Koshland. So, it is called as the Koshland's theory. Now, this theory is more acceptable and it is a realistic model to explain the enzyme substrate complex. Here the difference from the first one to the second one is that the active site was very very rigid and it had a pre shaped template right. Here the active site is flexible it is not rigid unlike the lock and key model. So, the active site is flexible it is not rigid and the interaction of the substrate with that of the enzyme induces a conformational change on the enzyme surface. The shape of the enzyme, the active site and the substrate adjust to maximize the fit which improves the catalysis. This is happening only because the active site is not rigid. If this active site is was rigid like what you saw in the first theory definitely you cannot go and fit into that it requires a pre shaped template. Now, in this theory the shape of the enzyme the active site the substrate all of them adjust to maximize the fit which can improve the catalysis. So, there is a greater range of what is called as substrate specificity. This model is more consistent 
with a wider range of enzymes. If you see the picture, have an enzyme here and if you see this active site, see it is not rigid because if you see the substrate, the substrate is almost the same as what you saw here in your lock and key model, right. See here it is almost spherical, but then again I have a triangular shape here, but it is not the same here in the active site, okay. That is why I meant to say that the active site is not rigid, but it is flexible, okay. And then I have a triangular shape, but here I do not have a triangular shape. So, despite of that no active site not being rigid, this substrate will try to go and fit into the active site. See, the substrate somehow will go and fit into the active site, but here the active site not being rigid will try to accompany the enzyme. So, somehow the substrate went and got fit into the active site of the enzyme. So, it was more accommodative the active site. So, a classical example to explain this is exactly how a hand goes and fits into a glove. See there could be a very small glove and the hand could be huge, but what you try to do? Somehow you try to push in the gloves to all your fingers and try to make the glove go and fit into your hand or you have a very small hand and you have a huge gloves, but somehow the glove and your hand both is accommodative enough and you will try to go and fit into your the glove into your hand. So, a classical example is how a hand can go and fit into a glove. See here the hand is quite big, but the glove is very small, but somehow my hand tries to go and fit into the glove. Okay. The next theory what I had was what is called as the substrate strain theory. Now here the substrate is being strained that is why the term is given as substrate strain theory. The substrate is being strained due to the induced conformational change in the enzyme. The strained substrate leads to the formation of a product. A combination of both the induced fit model and the substrate strain model is considered to be operative in an enzyme action. See here I have an enzyme, but then I have a substrate same way it is not rigid, but you see the active site and you see the substrate here. Now, Somehow when the substrate comes and tries to get fit into the active site of the enzyme, there is a strain that is being formed, okay. There is a strain on the substrate. See if you see here it was a straight line, but then there is a sort of bend that is nothing but indicating a strain on the substrate and that is why it is called as the substrate strain theory, okay. The substrate can go and fit into the enzyme but there is a strain that is being formed and that is why it is called as the substrate strain theory. So, we had seen on what was called as the lock and key model and then we had induced fit model and the third model was the substrate strain theory. So, this is overall a mechanism of how an enzyme catalyzed reaction occurs. What we basically saw today was just a brief note on what is an enzyme just touched upon different types of enzyme specificity and how could we go to explain the mechanism of an enzyme action with the three models that were applicable. Thank you.